thank you for joining us. Um, what a beautiful background you have there of, of Singapore. Welcome to Dubai. Background is your window, Rick, not your screen uh, printer. <laughs> no. Yes, yeah, looking out my window, I could be lying as well. It's pouring rain here. Heard. <laughs> yes. And we're jealous of that over here in the uh, desert. Rick, good yeah. morning. Thank you for joining us. Could we start, for the but, first of all, by asking you to introduce yourself formally? Hey, my name is Rick Stephen. I'm the Continental Director for Asia, but I'm also Chairman of the World Chefs Culinary Committee. I am Australian born and uh, been living and working in Singapore for just on a bit over 12 years. Uh, a long term member of the uh, World Chefs Association, Rick. Can you tell us what your role and duty actually is? For World Chefs, well, I look after Asia, which is, uh, to me, it's, uh, it's the biggest part. It's not, not country wise, we have 21 countries, but population wise, we are by far the biggest in, in the world in the World Chefs uh, groupings. Um, just with China and India alone, that puts us up there pretty high. So my role as a continental director is similar to what Andy does in, in for the uh, Africa Middle East. But uh, we we do a lot of, we do a lot of things in Asia when it's non-COVID. Yeah. And Again, and you've judged and you've visited us in uh, the Emirates. Tell me your impression of our Salon culinaire over here. Well, the, you know, the, the salon has gone from leaps and bounds. You know, it starts off down um, many years ago. It's like everything. It starts off small and just grows and grows and grows. But the thing, not only is it the, the quantity, but it's also the quality of work that they have in, that comes in the Emirates. It's, it's the skill levels that the people have and, and the way that they quite, quite well embrace everybody from all over the world. It doesn't matter what... Uh, what religion or what race you are, the, how they embrace everybody in the Emirates there to compete and, and to, to actually work there as well. Indeed of the UAE. Um, would you say, I mean, you've talked about the growth and the and the, the range of nationality. How, how would you say, Rick, um, our Salon Culinaire compares to other competitions around the world in terms of size and range of, of nationality? Well, your, your event is, is large. Um, I haven't been to the last couple because Andy doesn't invite me anymore because he says too many Australians are there. <laughs> so uh, so this, this one here, I'll have to talk to him about it. Um, no, but uh, so to be honest, I haven't been for the last three years. Um, so, but obviously my friends here, like uh, Andy was talking before about Tony Koo, obviously Otto comes a lot. Uh, Eric, Eric Lowe, they, they always give me the updates on what's happening over there. And to be honest with you, it's nearly impossible for me to go to every event anyway, because when we have events here, we, we're normally having like every second weekend there's a competition in Asia when, when COVID's not on. And, and would you say those other competitions in Asia, uh, we, we still, we still size-wise and competitor-wise, we're right up there with all the big ones? Oh, for sure. Uh, Dubai is really up there with the big ones, you know, just, just by the volume alone and the amount, amount of jury that you bring in, which is a, a really big tick for the, for the guild. Uh, they, they make sure they have the best there to judge the best, which is, I think it's a fantastic move. Uh, your role is not just as a judge and a chef. I know you're quite involved on the educational side. When you're teaching young chefs to take part in culinary competition, what's the best advice you can give them? You take a big show, you take the big show like you guys have. So they have the opportunity to pick the brains of nearly 1,000 different competitors. So my advice is for them is, yes, compete. You need to compete to, to get the experience of it. But you go around and study every piece and say, if I was to make that, how, would, how to make it, how to make it better? Or just to take one small component of that dish 
and see how to make that fantastic and add it to another part of your own dish. So it's all about opening your own mind up about when, when you're looking at things, be open-minded. Don't uh, misjudge something. Uh, I, I actually get more inspiration out of seeing the raw talent that young chefs have where their dishes may not win something or may not win the gold or the silver, but the bronze ones have a lot of potential there. Let's totally agree. Don't just um, look at what you've done, look at what the others to do to see who you can learn from each other. Yeah. Finally, Rick, I mean, we are in a difficult time with COVID. Do you feel that it's going to um, affect competitions going forward? Okay. So from the culinary committee point of view, we've just done up the, the new health regulations, uh, which take in consideration a lot of these points. But the big thing that we're looking at now, um, and I think you guys may be using it now because I give Andy the insight and send it to him early, is uh, the food waste. Uh, so that's a food waste is a very important part of our sustainability programs. And so we've placed that in now we're actually taking up the 10 points off for for this for food waste because uh, a lot of competitors say oh i'll put that in the fridge and i'll use, I'll use that later on or but there's a lot of things you can't do that too so and the the theory like when you're cooking in the national team you cook for 110 and people are cooking for 120 130 and we're going but you can only sell 110 tickets Yes, you, you have a few extra in case someone dropped something or something got broken or got sent back, but there's no there's no sense in, in, in doing 20% more because if you're doing a banquet for 100 and would you do it for, you cook 120, so if you do a banquet for 1,000, are you going to cook for 1,200 if you're working on the same maths? So we, we're looking at the food waste uh, and people go in and let's say they're making a simple Parisienne uh, which is a skill on its own to make a pom parisienne. But what are you doing with all that potato that's left? You can't say you're going to use it tomorrow because there's no competition tomorrow. Uh, so we're looking at uh, and little things like, do I cut it round or do I cut it square? If you cut it square, you're going to get more out of it than when you cut round because there's more waste when you're cutting things round. Unless you're making a rule out, but I'm talking about when you're cutting out a mousse or, or something out, out of a slab. So there's, there's lots of things we're looking at in, uh, and naturally it's the hygiene that, that's super important, um, especially with the hand washing. People think putting their hands under water for 10 seconds uh, is washing your hands. You know, there's eight, eight steps or eight movements in washing your hands. And, and what I say to everybody, sing happy birthday twice and you've done a good job, because that's how long it should take you 30 to 45 seconds to wash your hands. Bold is told to do. <laughs> uh, not, not only chefs, but everybody out there. The happy birthday twice rule, I think, is something that uh, we've all been asked to follow. And, and I guess some of the, the new rules that have come in um, due to COVID it, it are things that will stay with us permanently and, and, and throughout hospitality. Yeah, it's, it's a step forward. Um, you know, like... Uh, Everything needs to be updated, updated slowly. Um, even us need to be updated. Uh, so what we look at is, is to see how to make the rules fair um, for everybody and understandable for everyone, but it's getting the message out to everyone about the rules so they understand it. It's just like, you, you know, we talk about horse racing, there's horses for courses, and there's, you know, different teams play different days, including in football, you have wet weather, you have dry weather, but you've got to know what the conditions and the regulations are. Rick, we thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, and uh, we heard from Eric this morning to say you're having a nice thunderstorm over in Singapore. Please put it in your video and send it to us, because we need the rain over here in the desert. <laughs> Hope to catch up with you soon, Rick. Many thanks, okay. Rick. Joining Cheers us. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye.